we are officially signed up. And I might regret everything. <laughs> I have just signed myself up for an ultra marathon. I've never even done a marathon before. However, why not do 50 kilometers through the mountains? But before I get to that story, I want to tell you about my trip to Hawaii. So I was lucky enough to be invited by Apple to go to Hawaii to test out the brand new Apple Watch Ultra and put it through its paces across all of kind of the new functionality that's designed specifically for this ultra endurance style watch. So the first thing we did was we went hiking, tested out the compass function, the siren function, the emergency satellite as well as backtrack. Now this is something that's gonna be super important when it comes to this trail running expedition, but it was super cool and I think the biggest thing I got out of it was the backtrack function. I've done a few trails before where we might be doing a 20, 25 kilometer trail that's not super well marked. We get to a point and have to work out, okay, where are we supposed to go from here? Where was the map? In the Apple Watch Ultra, you can actually hit backtrack on the compass and it'll take you back to where you've started your activity. So all you've got to do is literally look at the screen, which is big and bright and easy to follow, and just follow the directions. So we kind of got showed how to use that in depth, and it really was something that kind of sparked my interest, being like, cool, I can utilize that for my running back home. So that's really exciting. The next thing we did was we hit the water to road test the brand new Oceanic Plus app. So this is Oceanic Plus, have worked with Apple to create essentially a fully functioning dive watch attached to your wrist. The underwater functionality of the new Ultra is insane, like it checks water depth and temperature, all those things you kind of need as a basis. However, if you're diving and you want to stay on top of that, you no longer need to have these fancy computers, compasses, dive times, computer, all that sort of stuff. It's on the wrist right there. So I don't have my uh, PADI certificate. I can't do the full dives but I'm gonna go and get it now. However, I did snooper, which is like the hose attached up to the boat. So I got to experience it all there. And it was, again, super, super interesting seeing just how far technology's gone to be able to dive down to 100 feet. So it's super, super deep, whilst keeping everything you need on your wrist. It also sends you these haptic vibrations, so that it vibrates right through a wetsuit, so you can feel, okay, cool, I need to slow my ascent back up to the boat so I don't get the bends here. I can see how much time I've got left in oxygen, how long until I can fly again, because you can't fly after scuba diving, something I just learned. Super, super interesting there, and something that, again, inspired me to go and get my certificate, because just being in the waters of Hawaii, stunning, as you can see, um, it also has made me excited to kind of do that back home and when I'm adventuring. So, gonna tick that one off the bucket list, get my scuba certificate, but also know that the fact that I've actually got a little dive watch attached to my wrist is a game changer. Now, last things, and this is the most important one, because this is what set me off on this next journey. We went trail running. Now, any of you that follow me on Instagram will know that I've been doing a bit more running for the past year push myself outside of my gym comfort zone and getting amongst nature as that's something I love doing. So I was super excited going into the trail running component and learning about how I can use the activities applications on the workout app on the Apple Watch Ultra to track and train for more activities like that. And the fact that it's specifically designed for people who want to do ultra marathons, like there is up to 60 hour battery life for this when you go in low power mode, but the fact that, as I said before, you've got this compass app, which means you can track a little bit easier. You can set yourself markers of how fast you're going in kilometers. It shows you when you're doing an outdoor run, what your elevation is, what your heart rate is at, what heart rate zone you're in, which is a really great way of tracking, particularly when you're building towards something. So over this series, I will be showing you heaps more of how I'm actually trained for things using the watch, because this is gonna be the way I kind of communicate with you guys and stay on top of it for myself. But that was probably something that, for me, really set the wheels in motion for being like, you know what, I actually want to challenge myself and utilize this more and push myself further than I have because I probably, I haven't stagnated in the gym, I still love training, but looking for that next challenge. So for me, that is doing an ultra marathon, 50 Ks over a mountain, 2200 meters elevation, also while trying to maintain my current body mass, which is about 80 kilos. So most ultra runners are a lot slimmer frame. They've got skinny legs, skinny arms. They're not carrying that bulk. However, I want to see how well I can adapt to running 
further whilst maintaining some size. And I wanna take you guys on that journey. So you're gonna help keep me accountable, making sure I don't skip any training sessions, none of my meals. Um, so first things first, we need to talk to Lane, my business partner in Milestone Strength, and he's gonna help write a program based on those things. So I'm gonna see you guys in the gym. Let's talk programming. This is gonna be the important thing leading into this because it's something I've never really done before. Normally I have like training for bodybuilding. Uh, and the goal here, as we said, is to try and maintain mass while also increasing the volume and the kilometers I'm running. Lane's gonna talk through the best way to do this. To me. Okay. So obviously, just from a training perspective, we only have a finite number of resources that you can use, right? Like, so we have to kind of figure out what's gonna make us fitter and get you running longer distances easier and what's gonna keep muscle mass on you. So basically, we have to cut out all the junk, all the junk volume, and we need to push towards exercises that are gonna be able to use you know, multiple joints, multiple body parts so that you can save time and save effort. Yeah. So basically what we wanna do is combine those two things with reducing as much load on your lower back as we can. So we kind of pull out a lot of barbell work just because for one, it increases your fatigue heaps. Yeah. Um, and two, it's probably not the best way to maintain muscle mass long-term anyway. Yeah. Because I'm not looking to get stronger during this period. I'm looking to just like maintain. Yeah. Whilst getting faster and fitter. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so upper body work is actually generally pretty easy to program when you're trying to do both. Um, lower body, the amount of volume you need after being a bodybuilder for so long is probably on the higher end of that 12 to 20 sets per week because you train with such high volumes as it is. So what we're gonna do is we need to be able to manage the output so that you can still get that stimulus, but you're also running, so you're increasing the fatigue there. So we do a lot of pre-fatigue work in the gym, um, stuff that will translate over and still keep some muscle on your legs, but also prepare us a little bit for running and kind of bridge that gap in the middle there. So lots of timed step ups, timed lunges, lots of single leg work that will then transition into your running as well. Yeah. So it helps us save a bit of energy there. But basically, when you're designing a program like this, you wanna consolidate your stresses. So every, all the stimulus that we need to put on the body, we need to figure out how can we do that whilst just making sure we maintain muscle and get stronger. I know as you put there, my train days. So I've got seven sessions in a week, yep. but we've gone down to four bodybuilding sessions and three running sessions. Yep. I was training five days. Is that just purely so I can, like, as you said, there's finite time and resource? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah just to recover more, um, it lets us put a couple of runs on leg days so we kind of take advantage of that pre-fatigue I was talking about before. Yeah. Um, and then that last long run that you, the skill stuff, the longer trail run that you wanted to do on the weekends, that's basically half skill, half recovery to prepare us for the, for the next week, so. Cool. I'm kind of nervous to be honest. Just from like a, I would try and avoid running on a leg day normally, but now it's like intentionally doing that. Mm. That's gonna be a fun little change up to see how the body adapts to it, but. Yeah, and I think the big thing for you is knowing that, because you go so hard all the time, is knowing that like when you're trying to build your endurance, spending a lot of time not going as hard as you possibly can is it's more beneficial. Is more beneficial. So for you, it's just more about kind of pegging back because you know, like like we've discussed, you could probably run, you know, a 45k run, 50k run, but it would absolutely buckle you. Yeah. But you just kind of like willpower your way through it. Yeah, it's getting through this without destroying myself. That's process. right. And maintaining muscle mass, training for it, and doing well. Yeah. Um, so for you, it's just about keeping your intensity high in the weight stuff, but just remembering with the endurance work to kind of sit in that zone two, zone three heart rate, which mm -hmm. would be the most difficult thing for you. Yeah. It's at the heart of a rabbit. It's got ears. I'll see you guys in the gym. This is going to be our very first official training run. Uh, Lee's currently putting on the toe socks right now. We read a thing saying that that's, well, I've been wearing them for a little while, but the whole goal of wearing toe socks is to keep separation between the toes so that if you've got any pushing, it stops like blood blister. It's just less skin running on each other. Today, we're aiming for about 12 kilometers, but elevation is the name of the game. So we've got uh, 560 meters elevation in this next run. 
I'll put a map on the screen now so you can see where we're going. And I'll try and remember to document all the way. Whew. Okay, so I'm gonna run it here and show you guys this. Because there's a storm coming in and it's chasing us right now. We might be getting wet in this one. We're only one kilometer in. Watch us in trail. This might be really windy, I don't know, but how far are we in? My watch is out of action right now. 29 minutes. Yep. Hang on. 4.15k. There we go. 400 k's in. So, can you see elevation on that? No. Hold this. I'll, I'll take over this one because I show our elevation. So, we've only gone 120 meters so far in the last 30 minutes. So, we still got another 400 meters elevation, which is right now. We're about to go all uphill. And it's all trail with horrible steps, but these are things we can get better at, so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Gel stop. So, wanted to make sure we're keeping our carbs up nice and high as well as sodium as the last trail run we did. There's that thunder. Uh, my calf cramped up pretty bad. You got the same brand? Yeah. Salted caramel. I'm working with sea salt chocolate. It's like eating the is goo. Not as delicious as it sounds. I didn't think goo sounded delicious. Mm. It's, this feels like I'm eating just like chocolate topping from an ice cream, but without the ice cream to be delicious. Cheers. What a spot! Rainbow! Not a bad view. We're gonna go back down there to finish. Out around here. finished that was it lee you were just saying what was the pace 7.30 it's not a bad pace at all i've just got mine off the screen that's not a bad pace at all considering that was a fair bit of elevation and sand yep. all in all we're just saying like that was actually probably the most ideal run that could have been enjoyable a good mixture of like textures from rock to sand to trail the hills were good there was a few times that were like hard the stairs right off around the gel factor that sucked but everything else was tasty that's a good first training run. He's just taken off his belt. Success. So we are one week post that run now. Uh, I've gone through two more runs as part of my weekly running volume. One of them did not go according to plan, however. So I was supposed to be doing a 15K trail and well, I'll let this video do the talking. This run is instantly decided to not go to plan. I just rolled my ankle pretty badly in a stupid little pothole. I'm only 4Ks in too, and I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I'm gonna turn around and limp home and keep moving well before it swells up too much. I was literally thinking five minutes ago, being like, man, it would suck to get injured out here by myself. Thankfully, after getting back and sort of having a rest day, I found that my ankle's fine. I've got mobility back into it. I think all the years of rolling it, playing football and stuff, means that I've just got elastic ankles, so we've recovered okay. The biggest thing for me here has actually been the training volume with my running. So after that big run, the first run, I trained legs and oh boy, my quads, the doms was real. Um, so in the next episode, of the road to ultra i'll be showing you 
what one of my training days looks like at the moment. We'll talk through training a bit more. I know we talked about that with Lane earlier on the video, but I'll actually show you guys what training looks like in order to maintain mass on my legs while keeping functional for running. But for now, it's just sticking to the program, uh, eating a lot, and just enjoying the process. So if you've liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, all that stuff you do on YouTube. I'm stoked to be back on here sharing this journey with you guys. It's a fun challenge and hopefully you've enjoyed the video along the way. I'll see you in episode two.